fifth Sunday, sixth Sunday after Epiphany. Um, after a few months off, we will have Ad Council this Tuesday at 7. So, Ad Council at 7 o'clock. Um, normal weekly schedule. Wednesday, when, oh, Wednesday uh, Bible study at 3, at 5, prayer meeting Thursday morning, but no choir this week. No choir. Please stand as you are able and join me in our call to worship followed by our opening hymn and our opening prayer. Come to Christ, the living stone, rejected by the world, but in God's sight, chosen and precious. We have responded to Christ's call and seek to fulfill the spiritual cause, a living reminder of God's love and grace. We have responded to Christ's call. Now we are no people, but now we are God's people. Called out of the darkness into God's marvelous light. Therefore, we sing with the church in all ages. Blessed be your name, O God, our Redeemer. By your mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I'll open hymn 733, Marching to Zion. Oh 
here on us, that we are to seek them, and are willing to give more than we desire or deserve. Help us to seek that we may truly find, so to ask that we may joyfully receive, so to knock that the door of your mercy may be opened to us through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
chapter 6, verse 17 through 26. Jesus went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Ty and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking, looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. <clears throat> Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For this is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received comfort. Woe to you who are well fed, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how your ancestor treated the false prophets. The word of the Lord. This morning we read four passages. Two of them goes along together, and at least it seems like that on the surface. The gospel message reminds us of the famous Sermon on the Mount, specifically at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, what we call the Beatitudes. But it's not exactly the same. There are several things that are different. In the Matthew passage, for example, we see that Jesus went up a what? A mountainside. And that's why it's called Sermon on the Mount. Here we see he went down and stood on a level place. I don't know, you know, mountain level. And also, the, the words are a little bit different. Many of us may not like these words when we first read them, where Jesus specifically said, Blessed are you who are poor, but later on he said, Woe to you who are rich. And I, I struggled with that because I know many people may, may not realize that we live in a very what? Rich country. I, I mean, coming from Belize originally and Everybody is trying to get to America for what? That's where all the rich people live. I mean, whenever they came down as tourists and they have dollars and they're spending it and they can stay in the big resorts and, you know. Everybody wants to go to where the rich people live. I know I did. It's a land of what? Opportunity and prosperity, of freedom. And equality. But here we see Jesus is pointing out something more than just rich and poor. For I know some rich people who are very stingy, and I know some rich people who are what? Very generous. When I was a teenager, I, uh, my, my mentor, I did not realize this for about two and a half years. I, I was that slow. I worked for him practically every day of the week, either mowing the lawn, working on the farm, etc. And he was very wealthy, and you would never know it. He wore all the time coveralls. He picked up all the kids in a van. He was the one that took me to church and took me back home and along with all the other Hispanic kids. 
And you would never know he was wealthy because of the way he treated people. Everybody was his friend. He was friendly. He was doing all this work. And the reason I realized how wealthy he was was after two and a half years of working with him, I ate in his house. <coughs> I did everything there but sleep. One day he was doing his quarterly taxes. Quarterly taxes. And he was paying more in that quarter than my mother earned for the entire year. And I start doing a little math and realize if he earned that in a quarter and he owed that much for just that quarter, how much he you know, would earn for the year. And I realized that this man was really what? Rich. But the reality is the way he treated people, you would never know he had money because money was never the issue. As a matter of fact, as we read more in detail, Jesus points out, yes, there are people who have financial security now, but you never know. I mean, the market could what? Crash. And that rich person is all of a sudden what? Poor. But here we see the key to these verses are, blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and they insult you and reject your name as evil. Not because for your sake, but because of the Son of Man. In other words, what you believe and who, more specifically, in whom you believe is the most important thing. It's not the physical wealth, but here we see the same thing that we see in the Beatitudes. It is the person who trusts in God. He points out that there were the, that be, rejoice and be exceedingly glad because that's the way their ancestor treated the prophets. The prophets quite often told things and spoke the word of God that people did not want to want hear. And later on, when he said, but woe to those who, who speak well of you. For that is what your ancestors treated the what? The false prophet. The false prophet that told them the good stuff that they wanted to hear. So it's not about physical wealth, but it's about who you are. Are you a person of faith who trusts in God? Come what may, good news, bad news? And that's what we see in the book of Jeremiah and the first psalm. Both of them use the tree as the metaphor. A tree planted by the what? Streams of water. Listen to what Jeremiah says. This is what the Lord said. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart has turned from the Lord. In other words, both the New Testament and the Old Testament is saying the person who is cursed is not the person who have money or don't have money, it's not the material things. It is the man whose heart has turned from the Lord. Instead of putting their faith, their trust, their belief in God, they put it in. And that's why it curses the one who trusts in man, who draw his strength from mere flesh, and whose heart has turned from the Lord. And, and he used this metaphor. It says, that person is like a bush. A small little scraggly bush that is out in the desert. As a matter of fact, it says, they will dwell in parched places of the desert, a salt land where there where no one lives. I don't know about you, but to have salt in the land, the Romans, for example, whenever they took over a place and they wanted to, to totally ruin the land, they would salt the land so that it could not grow any crops. And, and that's the metaphor where we see here, it says, a salt land where no one can make a living because they don't trust in the Lord. But on the other hand, 
picking up at verse 7, it says, Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. <coughs> so the difference between the two extremes is not material, but who do you trust? In man or in God? That's the extreme that, that Jeremiah and Jesus is, play, is putting here. Woe to you who place your faith in mere riches. Woe to you who rely upon human strength and human military, etc. Because just like this tree planted by waters that sends its roots, that when the heat comes, because in reality, life is always full of what? Problems. The heat will come. Problems will come. But it says, when the heat comes, its leaves are always green, and it has no worries in a year of drought. The heat, the drought, the problems will come. But do you put your faith in man, or do you put your faith in God? It goes on and says, and I love this verse, the heart is what? Deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? The heart. And, it's, and, and the Old Testament is not talking about that human organ that pl pumps blood around your circulatory system and your body. It's talking about your mind, your and, and here we see it says that a person's inner mind inner soul, that person being, it is the deceitful. Who can really understand? Another way of putting it is a person's motives. Who can understand a person's motive? Listen to what the verse goes on and says though in verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart and examines the what? The mind. God does not judge us from our physical wealth or physical, material things. He judges us from our hearts, our mind. He, he says, I search and I examine. In other words, God looks at you and me and he searches our heart, he examines our mind, and he rewards each person according to their conduct, according to their deed, according to what they deserve. A lot of people like to say that, you know, God will give you what you need. No, God gives you what you deserve. I mean, there are lots of people that are poor. They have needs. But God said, it's not what you need, it's what you deserve. He tests you. He, the, the drought will come. The, the problems will be there. But do you trust in God come what may? Good times? Bad times? See, some people it's easy to trust in God in what? Good times. It's hard to trust in God when things are going what? Bad. And, and that's what we see also in the, the psalm, you know, the same metaphor. A tree planted by what? Streams of water. The problems will come. We all face life in all its many facets. We all have lost loved ones. We all have lost money. We all have lost you. We've all been sick. We've all faced all those problems. But the question is, do you put your faith in man or do you put your faith in God? And God examines hearts or minds. And that's what Jesus is saying. Don't put your faith in the false prophet, you know, when they, things are good. Don't trust in God. Paul ends up in 1 Corinthians pointing out that they preach what? Christ crucified. Doesn't sound like good news. But here is the hope that we have. 
and the reason we have faith. It says, if there was no resurrection, Christ died for what? Nothing. And, if, and because Christ was raised, we too will what? Be raised. Paul ends, Christ has indeed risen from the dead. And those who have fallen asleep, those who have died, you know, he sugarcoated, but those who have died, they too will one day be resurrected. And as Christians, we have the faith in God through Jesus Christ. That we one day will be resurrected just as Christ has been resurrected. We are like a tree planted by waters. The drought may came, might come, the heat will come, the problems will come. But God will be with us. The word of the Lord. <coughs> Special music today.
Let us boldly affirm our faith from the word of 1 Timothy, found on page 889 of your hymnal. There is one God, and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all, to whom we testify. This saying is sure and worthy of all that confess it, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory, prayed in the mystery of the gospel. Donna, who 
cannot be here because of illness. We lift up Mary Beth as she will be facing surgery soon with her shoulder. Lord, we ask for your blessing upon our church. We thank you for the many blessings. And Father, now we pause for a moment of personal silent prayer and personal confession. Now, as children of God, we pray the words of the Lord taught us to pray, saying, <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. I appeal to you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. This morning offering will not be received. along the way. 
or closing him, hymn number 642, this so sweet to trust in Jesus. <laughs> Thank you.